At the time that I'm posting this video, it's been 2,367 days since October 29th, 2013. That's the release date of Battlefield 4. Now in 2020, this game is regarded as one of the best modern Battlefield games made on the Frostbite engine. I always see people leaving comments and talking on social media about how much they still like Battlefield 4. And considering the game is nearly seven years old, there is actually a surprisingly healthy player base for it, at least on PC anyway. Every time I fire up Battlelog and I'm checking through the server browser, there's lots of EU and North American servers, there's some servers scattered around the Asia Pacific region, and then there's a couple of really popular Australian servers that are always full, and I was looking today, one of them had a 16 person queue, which is pretty mental. That's a dedicated player base for a very old game now. Every time I do go back and play Battlefield 4, I I realise how much I miss Battlefield being a modern first-person shooter game. It's where I think Battlefield belongs as a franchise. And the reasons for that are that modern-day combat with modern weaponry, vehicles and settings, they allow the Battlefield formula to work at its best. The sandbox experience, where the player is free to do almost anything that they want to do in their own way, that comes right to the forefront in Battlefield 4. Now just before we jump in, if you are a frequent watcher of this channel and you're not already subscribed, please do consider clicking that subscribe button. I will be making plenty more Battlefield 6, Battlefield 21 themed content over the next few months because I think it's important that we talk about this stuff and it'd be great if we could keep the community growing here on the channel. Battlefield 6, Battlefield 2021, whatever you want to call it, whatever DICE is going to call it, for me, it just has to be more like Battlefield 4, in almost every way. And I say almost every way because Battlefield 4 still has its quirks and its problems, and going back and playing it after it being out on the market for seven years, it is starting to show its age a little bit. And I think we all remember the launch and the first eight to ten months of support not being very good, but by and large, I think Battlefield 4 represents the best known direction that Battlefield 6 should be taking notes from. First of all, let's talk about scale. Battlefield 4's maps were large. In some cases, they were huge, and they were sprawling in many different locations. Seas of Shanghai, good example. That was a concrete jungle. Rogue Transmission, the other end of the scale. A huge satellite dish with a surrounding forest. Paracel Storm, a massive island-hopping naval battle set in the middle of a huge storm with crashing waves and lightning. Almost every location chosen for Battlefield 4 embodied large-scale combat in its own way, whether it was urban or whether it wasn't. And that led to what felt like massive battles with infantry, ground and air vehicles all coming together to fight over objectives and different landmarks. Yet it was still the same 64-player setup that we have today in games like Battlefield 5. And a lot of the time, in Battlefield 5, I don't get that same sense of scale. 64 players on a round of Rotterdam Conquest doesn't even come close to the feeling that you get from 64 players on Dawnbreaker or Seas of Shanghai. The scale of those Battlefield 4 maps, they dwarf those in Battlefield 5. Over the years, starting with Battlefield 1, I think DICE changed their map design philosophy and has really scaled down the scope of the locations that they end up building. They're taking out those larger open spaces, and they're squashing everything closer together. There are of course exceptions, maps like Sinai Desert in Battlefield 1, and Panzerstorm in Battlefield 5. But notice how those maps, instead of scaling down the entire map size, they shifted the capture points closer together. That shortening of distance resulted in a reduction of overall scale because those areas of the map then devoid of capture points were rarely used. Battlefield 4, for the most part, utilised the full size of the map area. That allowed vehicles of all types, helicopters, tanks, ATVs, transport buggies, motorbikes, all of those vehicles, they became integral to the flow of that map and became almost a necessity to move from one flag to another. The vast scale of Battlefield 4's maps deeply integrated vehicles into the core gameplay loop. Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5, 
they don't have that same integration and therefore they lose a really important aspect of the Battlefield formula. Battlefield 6 needs to recapture the scale, and if the game is going to take on a modern combat setting, I think that will greatly increase the chance that DICE will take that scale back. Then let's talk about something that I like to call freedom of choice. Battlefield 4 went all out when it came to weaponry, vehicles and gadgets. It gave players the complete freedom to kit out soldiers and vehicles in any way that they really wanted to. Suppressors, scopes, laser sights, grips, barrel options, weapon paints, everything was there for the weaponry. Any weapon attachments came with positives and negatives, and that meant that you could create loadouts that would benefit you in certain situations and hurt you in others, but the ultimate decision came down to you, the individual player. That level of freedom has almost been completely taken away with recent games. Battlefield 1, perhaps more understandably, considering its historical setting, had practically no weapon customization at all, with DICE instead opting for this strange variant system. You could pick from one to three variants of each weapon, and each variant had different statistics depending on the role that it was crafted to perform. You had trench variants that would work best for hip fire and close quarters action. You had optical variants that would add scopes or sights to give you greater visibility and effectiveness at longer ranges. And then storm variants that provided the holder with greater ADS accuracy whilst moving around. Now this system was not overly liked by players because it took away an element of first person shooters that they'd been accustomed to seeing the customization and personalization of their equipment. Battlefield 5 implemented something different, but in my opinion, equally as disappointing, the weapon specialization system. This replaced the previous distinct variant system with a flowchart, allowing users to pick and choose different invisible specializations for each weapon. DICE implemented this without applying physical attachments to the weapons that linked to the specializations that you were applying, and instead they opted to put those attachments into the weapon skin system, where a certain skin might have a muzzle break or something. This in my opinion made the entire customization system feel very shallow and extremely uninspiring. It was another system that was limiting control that used to be in the hands of the player in previous Battlefield games. Battlefield 6, it needs to walk in the footsteps of Battlefield 4 and perhaps more recently, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, implement a modular weapon and vehicle customization system where different attachments and different parts can be applied to make visual and statistical changes, giving players the freedom to build the loadouts that they want to use. This leans heavily into the sandbox element of the Battlefield formula, being able to play the way that you want to play. Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5, they were both built as games having to deal with historical limitations, but there were ways that DICE could have dealt with those limitations without passing on an inferior experience to the end user. The two games sought to shrink and narrow the gameplay experience of the Battlefield franchise, and the result of that is a less fun, less sandbox feeling. And then something else that I wanted to mention, Battlefield 4 was all about multiplayer. Yes I know, it shipped with a single player story and that helped to ground the combat happening in the game into a fictional war that was ironically set in 2020. The single player wasn't really anything to write home about however, and it was a sort of narrow experience that you expect from a game that's almost universally known for its multiplayer element. Battlefield 4, from the moment that it launched, was all about multiplayer. There was no post-launch single player DLC, there was no co-op experience, Battle Royale, that didn't exist in the way that it does today, so there was none of that to worry about. Battlefield 4 was straight up multiplayer. Five different premium DLCs launched for the game, adding 20 new multiplayer maps, and then after that DICE released another three maps in free DLCs that were developed as part of an extended support period that came about after the sales of Battlefield Hardline. 
There were loads of new weapons added with those DLCs, lots of gadgets, lots of vehicles. The entire Final Stand DLC was basically a conversion to a futuristic war. It was an homage to Battlefield 2142. Many fans ended up calling it the 2043 expansion for Battlefield 4. Everything after the launch of Battlefield 4 was focused on the multiplayer experience. And that is what Battlefield 6, in my opinion, needs to channel. A multiplayer experience first and foremost, and perhaps even only a multiplayer experience. I've said this in the past, I made a video about it not too long after the launch of Battlefield 5, that the next Battlefield game should be multiplayer only. And as more time has gone past, I'm seeing more and more people come round to that idea and thinking that multiplayer only would be a good direction for Battlefield to go in. By only focusing on what Battlefield does best, the DICE team would be able to channel their energy into the one thing and make it the best that it can be, rather than having time, resources and development team talent essentially wasted on elements like single player that has virtually no replay value, co-op that I don't know if anyone's really interested in for a Battlefield game, and Battle Royale, and that didn't really work out with Firestorm. I think Battlefield fans could care less about those things, and they care more about multiplayer, so why don't you just funnel everything into the multiplayer? That's what everyone plays, and that's where everyone spends their time, so why wouldn't you invest more in that section of the game? But I think it's important that you guys tell me how you're feeling about this topic because I understand that perhaps saying that Battlefield 6 should be multiplayer only or that Battlefield 6 should be more like Battlefield 4, those are some fairly controversial things to say and I'm pretty sure that some of you out there will disagree completely with my point of view here and that's absolutely fine. I want you to know that you can go down into the comment section and express your opinion in any way that you want to. Whether you agree or disagree, that's absolutely fine. I'm just interested at the moment because we're so far away from the next Battlefield game anyway, it would be just great to hear your views and opinions about this kind of topic. Battlefield 6, as I've said, is a long time away, but it is well known that DICE is working on the next Battlefield game, and personally, after the mess of Battlefield 5, I want to see Battlefield come back strong and deliver a really solid experience. Thanks very much for watching, leave me a rating as well, it is always appreciated, and I'll catch you in the next one.